Broadcasting live from Archway Commons on the plain of Arcavios, this is Tap Tap Concede. Welcome everybody to Tap Tap Concede. My name is Graham. Joining me as always is Cameron. Hi. And Nelson. Hey there. Today we're going to be talking about, well, I mean, a couple different things. Uh, some stuff on Arena, some secret lairs, some Strixhaven. But first, a reminder that the show is brought to you by Card Kingdom. Check out cardkingdom.com slash LRR. Get your Strixhaven there. They have it for you and they will send it your way. And you can tell them Loading Ready Run sent me. Button please. And they'll give you a little one-inch button, which right now says Snowlands, Snow Problem. And of course, this show and everything we do is brought to you by you and your kind support of our Patreon at patreon.com slash Loading Ready Run. And we really appreciate your support. Though we are not yet quite at the level where our entire YouTube shtick can be giving away colossal amounts of money. Mm. Need a few more of the uh, S tier Patreon commitments before we can just start throwing <laughs> buckets of money at people. I could always give away colossal amounts of money. It's just colossal amounts of money by my standards. I have a bus pass. <laughs> <laughs> we'll make our own Mr. Beast style of videos where it's like, I give away my bus pass to this Twitch streamer. You won't believe their reaction. <laughs> <laughs> There's eight days left in the month and everything. Yeah. I just need it for today. Then I'll, I'll mail it. Yeah. So we are talking about YouTuber Mr. Beast, who, if you're not familiar, his sort of shtick, as I've said, is, you know, giving away lots of money. He's managed to find this incredible niche where he makes videos giving away exorbitant amounts of money such that they're they're self-sustaining that like they get millions of views for millions of subscribers and so he's you know if he can do a video where it's like oh, i'm giving away fifty thousand dollars in this video knowing that he'll make more than that back in like sponsorships or youtube ad revenue and it's like well that's an interesting niche good on you yeah i think it's beautiful yeah it's kind of great in, in the commercial for this arena event they talked about how one of the videos last year was like selling a home for a dollar it's like, that person has a house now. All right, cool. You know, I know there's lots of discourse that can be had around the notion of, you know, doing good on camera. But I generally speaking, from what limited experience I have been able to glean, Mr. Beast himself seems like a decent guy, which is nice. And so Wizards and Arena ran this promotion just a mere hour ago at time of recording, which was that if you log on to Magic Arena and you play the FNM event, specifically between 11 a.m. and noon Pacific time, you have a chance to be paired against Mr. Beast himself, who was playing on Arena under a pseudonym. And at the end of that hour, somebody who or two people who played in the event you don't actually have to have been paired against him i believe i'm pretty sure it's just anyone who played within that time is eligible to win two prizes of twenty five thousand dollars. thanks mr beast on behalf of whoever won and the magic community in general for making this fun event yeah, yeah. i definitely played in it i assume that if my name came up internally they'd be like he's, he's probably not eligible but i played <laughs> yeah yeah it's you know if i won twenty five thousand dollars, that would be pretty great i could pay off my student loans or buy a used volkswagen <laughs> think of the bus passes you could afford <laughs> so many groceries <laughs> let's be honest you're putting it all into japanese strixhaven well clearly it's the best dv nelson that's just science <laughs> right the event was a pretty typical fare for an fnm at home event which is the thing that they've been running every every weekend on on arena since the pandemic there's this this particular one was 10 pre-constructed decks of the 10 color pairs and you pick a deck you can change it between games and you play until you get to well you play as much as you want it's free to enter you play as often as you want you get a card for one win and a card for a second win and then that's it but hey if you want to grind through your daily wins then that's a fine way to do it i played the black white life gain deck and it was fun I kind of liked the blue-black mutation deck, which I thought was like fun tempo-y control while still feeling like yeah, a lot of these decks seem to avoid the bad feels mm, yeah. cards like, you know, counter spells or removal, even though the mutation station has eliminate. It has the dirge bad too, I think. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. But hey, it's got Massacre Worm, one of my all-time favorite cards. One day, I want to have a job I love as much as Massacre Worm loves its job. And let it be known that I like my current job quite a lot. <laughs> but Massacre Worm definitely got me in one of these games. The, the, the Mutate deck was pretty challenging for the life gain deck, but it paired up pretty well against most of the other decks that I encountered. I played a game with uh, like most of the decks, I want to say. My most interesting game was as the Black-White life gain deck against the Green-White Adventures deck. 
and my opponent ended up roping me but like they weren't dead they they tilted and they had one more draw step to maybe get out of it but they had made a couple mistakes forgetting to tap with their chop down jack of the beanstalk card uh, so i got in some good attacks that i didn't deserve but it was a long and back and forth swingy game as as often the sort of intro pack battles format or dual decks or you know this this kind of like power down magic where the decks are all pretty much equal on power level like there there'll be a few good cards or few few really good cards in each deck and a lot of kind of you know meat and potatoes starchy kind of cards i also had a pretty interesting game where i also i lost a masker worm and archipelagor i had my blue black mutation opponent on the ropes but then they managed to just barely stabilize with masker worm the way you do but i don't know yet whether i played against mr beast or whether i won twenty five thousand dollars. so you know hopefully Hopefully I'll get that email pretty soon. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we know what his pseudonym was. I guess we'll find out at some point. But I'll say this, Arena didn't didn't seem to suffer for it. Like I didn't encounter any like weirdness in the client and you know, nothing was I assume it was under some amount of stress. Yeah. Yeah, but it, that seemed to be going well. So, that's good. So there was a rule in this event that you couldn't concede, right? Or they told you not to concede. Probably they're looking at matches that completed and that's how they're pulling from the lottery. If if the idea was that they definitely didn't tell us everything about this event, right? But yeah. say say it's just they look at the log of between matches that started at 11 and matches that started at 12 or something or ended by 12. And then it's like all the completed games and then they just put all the opponents in a list and then tick two. You weren't allowed to concede, but around 1240. So I'm, I'm jamming for the full hour. Oh, James is telling us they won't announce winners till next week. Fair enough. But after, I think it was right after that, that really close game I was talking about, I played against the black green deck who, and my opponent like taught me how we were supposed to be gaming this system, which is just to like, you know, keep your hand, play a couple lands, and then either, you know, just whoever plays a creature first. So I played a creature and then my opponent is like, OK, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm just going to discard the hand size at the end of turn. <laughs> and this is legal. We're playing the game out. I'm not cheating. I didn't concede. My <laughs> opponent beat me fair and square, you know, and but it only took like 90 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> i so, too would like a nanoscale chance of winning several thousand dollars to not play magic the gathering <laughs> i wow i played a lot of this thing and i did not encounter anybody doing that uh, yeah i didn't think of it until i ran into someone doing it and i was like oh yeah fair enough okay i guess we don't have to try to enjoy the game we can just try to like craft as many lottery <laughs> tickets for ourselves as we want like sure yeah because i assume the no concede thing is just so that they'd didn't get people just trying to get as many games against as many different opponents as possible by just scooping constantly. Yeah, this this reminds me of like, you know, every iteration of trying to figure out what the right prize structure is or how to like make everyone happy at working at Yellow Jacket, like trying to trying to make just the right cues and just try to make just the right house rules or whatever, like store policies so that like everyone's happy. And it's always like every change you make, someone will figure out how to game the new system because that's that's what we do. Like we're gamers, you know, we can't help it. Mm hmm. So, yeah, it was pretty funny. That they're like, no concedes. And then it's like, OK, no concedes. That's pretty funny. It definitely felt like one or two of the folks I was playing against were maybe newer to the game. But generally speaking, I think we were just playing pretty normal games of magic. So that was cool. At least. Yeah. I mean, if you told me that I just have to play Super Smash Brothers for an hour and there's a chance I win twenty five thousand dollars, I'm definitely get, definitely getting in there and just getting, you know, getting tossed off the side of the screen for an hour straight. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't even know how to jump or hit someone in that game. And I've played it for like 40 hours all all i know is that i'm not supposed to take jigglypuff anymore oh why not <laughs> apparently his edge guard is too strong i don't know <laughs> not when i'm playing also upcoming on arena because they were talking about some sort of forthcoming announcements they're doing another limited arena open right they told us about that a little while ago but it's coming up soon right yeah it's coming up very soon actually in fact in two weeks time so the weekend of May 8th and 9th is going to be sealed Strixhaven. So it's still sealed, not draft. I'm still okay with that. And it'll be very much like the Kaldheim one, except that I think I have a shot at doing better this time. <laughs> yeah. Why did you feel hamstrung for Kaldheim? Oh, no, just I didn't have a lot of success with Kaldheim sealed i actually did fine on day one there's a recording of it on the channel and I, I got very very close to making day two specifically in best of three in best of one kaldheim sealed i just had a very miserable record i don't i can't point to anything in particular it just it was just bad but so far in 
Strixhaven, I've been having a lot more fun. Cool. Mm-hmm. Will you plan to pay, play best of three or best of one? I think I'll probably still play best of three just because I, I think I prefer it for like a tournament scenario. But if I goof out of that, I might just, you know, sadness run it back into the best of one a queue. <laughs> right. James is typing possibly to tell us. Okay. He thinks with MA cards, best of three is the way to go. Yeah, because with the Mystical Archive stuff, you could have very high variance cards mixed in there. Right. And like I've done some very silly stuff with like, you know, if you have Blood Researcher, the 2-2 Menace that gets a plus and plus one counter if you gain life and the Witherbloom Apprentice, which is the 2-2 with Magecraft that whenever you cast a copy of spell, you drain your opponent. Okay. If you have those in play, say you've cast one of them this turn and then with only a storm count of one, you play Tendrils of Agony, that's four counters on the <laughs> blood researcher right yeah it's wild hey i can't believe i could cast tendrils of agony in this format <laughs> i've yet to open a tendrils of agony and let me tell you i've gone through a lot of sealed pools hoping to live the dream yeah i have 50 prize packs right now i haven't i've opened one but i've, I've earned 50 prize packs so that for me that's i don't know i usually get about three a draft so i'm, I'm on like my 15th to 20th event and i've seen the tendrils once so people are taking them yeah like people are picking them <laughs> I think I don't think you're you're storming your opponent completely out. I think like the dream would be a storm count of three. But like the thing about the synergy with like Magecraft or gaining life or draining or whatever, particularly in Witherbloom, is that if you just get to tendrils a second time, that's still just a huge life swing with other like Magecraft and life gain and stuff synergies popping off all over your board, ideally. Yeah. Yeah. Magecraft is so fun. I really like that you get it on copying spells because it's not just the Mystical Archive Storm cards that let you copy spells too. There's there's this mentor's guidance for two and a blue. You scry one and then draw a card, but you get to copy it if you control basically a creature like if you have a i think it's a cleric or wizard or a warrior or a rogue or a druid you get a co- another copy of it and so if you have stuff that cares about if you have magecraft cards basically and you play this it's often a beating that card is very good shaman or warlock okay not right that makes sense not warriors i just knew it was a lot of creature types sorry james corrects me in chat cleric druid yeah. shaman warlock wizard right all the spell casting jobs Right, that makes sense. Yeah, the the most fun I've been having with Magecraft so far is Clever Lumimenser, uh, which is the one white mana zero one Magecraft. This gets plus two plus two until end of turn, so it's kind of like Step Links. Is that good? Because it seems bad. Well, how many spells do you have, and like what spells do you have? It's pretty good with Study Break, and it's pretty good with Mentor's Guidance, and then it's pretty good with just Learn Cards, right? Because you can usually get yourself a copy of Environmental Sciences so that you have like your Learn Card plus another kind of cheap spell. Yeah, but I, I mean probably but i mean it seems like the kind of card where i'll manage to do a few like cute wins with it it won't ever be a really high pick and then by the end of the format i'll stop investing in it so highly because i'll have been burned enough times by having a you know one drop that doesn't do anything but yeah i have attacked for eight with it more than once all right then yeah that's all right keep in mind like your plus two plus two and hexproof spell at common gives it plus four plus four you know like it's it's extra good with pump spells we were gonna play pump spells anyway all right well fair enough i guess yeah really gonna build the deck around it but i'm on board Mm -hmm. how many colors do you typically end up in because i'm typically finding myself in three i have had atrocious luck with fixing so you know that there's there's pretty good fixing in this format and i have not opened any of it in any of my sealed pools so i've been pretty conservative in playing two colors i've been playing almost always two colors i had a draft go awry well weirdly like i thought the draft deck was bad while i was drafting i was kind of uncomfortable and like was switching between plans several times but i ended up three color i was mardu with like a shadrick silver quill and the lower hold command and i actually took the first game of the deck as a red white splash black and that didn't go great so then i took the rest of the games as black white splash red and i got to seven wins which i haven't normally been doing but i prefer to play two colors mentioning the fixing so the campus is PSA, they have a second ability. Yep. I yeah. see my opponents more often than they should, which is to say, you know, like once or twice, but that's still more often than they should. Untapping, leaving all their mana up, and then I pass the turn, and then they're like, okay, untap. And it's like, you have a scry. You've got six mana, and you're not casting a spell. Scry, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm all over those campuses for the scry. I don't know if I, to my knowledge, I haven't missed one yet in terms of like using your spare mana. Yeah. I'm always just thinking about like, oh, when do I get to get my value back out of this tap land? Can't wait. I also, I prefer to only play two because I don't know. I don't play Prismari that much, but I find that like every 
college has like things they want to put mana into, including just these lands themselves. And so I don't know, like the third one at the third tap land in my Strixhaven decks, I'm kind of like, eh. I think it's also that you really you quite often at least have the ability to go one drop, two drop, three drop, two spells or something on turn four. And so you just want all your lands to come and play untapped. Have you found that or do you would you like to load up? Because in call time, I would play like nine tap lands and I'm like, this is fine. It's great. I have been finding myself generally in in three. I mean, not in three colors. Like, well, I once or twice I have actually just been like fully Saltai or Mardu or something. But, you know, generally I'm splashing, I want to say like in Seal. Mm -hmm. i want to say i'm like wither bloom with three red spells in there and then i'll run if i have the the right campuses i'll I'll run three of them across those three colors i haven't had an opportunity to run run more than three so I don't, I don't actually know how that would work but i have i've run three fairly often and i think it's been okay yeah i guess i guess three is still fine in a two color deck i i agree i probably wouldn't want to run more than two in a two color deck yeah i guess it makes more sense and you want a bit more leniency when you're you need to color fix but if you're just on, yeah, just one of the two color X, I think two is probably all you need because it is pretty late game by the time you have five mana and nothing else to do, right? Like you've probably seen at least 15 cards. So you probably have at least one of these and you also probably don't have what 10 lands by the time you can activate one. So you don't need to have a second one. I definitely find myself with just a lot of lands in general, even in draft. I've been playing decks with only 16 lands sometimes, and I know some people are playing only 15. Have you been playing like more than, or do you mean in in draft you're taking the lands often? I think you're playing a different format than me. No, I mean like just like in play. Like I'm running decks with the same number of lands as I would normally, like 17. I just end up with more of them in play, like either by searching them up or just the games going along. I just find myself with lots of mana by the time the game is over. So to hear you being like, oh, I'm running like 16 and maybe some people are even running 15. I'm like, is this what format are you playing? Because because every, everyone I'm playing against is like, I'm going to build up a whole bunch of land and cast massive haymakers. OK, well, let me tell you about some really playable cards, in my opinion, in this format. Clever Lumamancer, Academic Dispute, Guiding Voice, Environmental Sciences. Did I say study break? Yeah. Yeah. I do like environmental sciences. Yeah. That's a deck right there. And, you know, it's only one and two drops. I like Luis Scott Vargas tweeted, these are the same card. And it was academic, what was it called? Academic Dispute and Annihilate. So Academic Dispute is the one from Strixhaven, and it's a single red mana. Target creature must block this turn if able and learn. And you can give it reach too. Right. And you can also give the creature reach so that you can force it to chump a one of your flyers if need be. And then Annihilate was three black, black, destroy a creature, draw a card. And he's like, these are the same thing. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're killing a creature and drawing a card. And honestly, learn is better than draw a card, I would say. Yeah. Hmm. We- weirdly, yeah. <laughs> Assuming you've drafted it appropriately. I saw another tweet that was like, if you haven't, or if you're playing with someone new who hasn't seen the learn me- mechanic before, just tell them it can be replaced by the words demonic tutor. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like... It's a bit of a stretch, but on the other hand, it's like strangely more powerful because when you get to go get something out of your sideboard, that means the thing you you are getting didn't take a slot in your main deck. So it's like your total, the total number of cards that are available to you, like the total power of your deck over time is higher. But yeah, pretty much, pretty much demonic tutor or draw a card or somewhere in the middle there. Mm. I, I think environmental sciences is the only lesson that I will regularly chuck one in the main not always but like that's the one that is most likely to be main decked by me past summoning probably a close second because i end up in like wither bloom life gain fairly frequently i have yet to put a, a lesson card in the main it, it feels like an admission of defeat <laughs> the the environmental sciences again it was a three color deck and i was just like uh, i really need to make sure that this lands did you have one in the main and one in the board I can't remember because to me that seems like it's it's pushing you further away from fixing your mana. Oh, if you have like six learn cards and you don't have one on the board, but you do. No, I remember now. That was the problem. The problem was the learn cards. I only had like two, and one of them was very conditional. Oh, I Mm. see. So I was like, I don't want to not. I was like, am I more likely to draw it if I don't put it in the deck? (laughs) Right? Like, am I more likely to be able to get it if I'm only relying on learn cards or just purely ripping off the top? Because if I put it in the deck, I can't go tutoring for it with learn so what's the right way and it you know i decided that it just worked out better to to run in, in the main and because it's only two mana it worked out well it was fine but you know that was interesting discussion but yes in that case the issue was i just didn't have enough learn yeah i've been prioritizing learn pretty highly i think it kind of goes like bombs learn everything else <laughs> wow 
Hmm. Well, especially if you only have two, like by the end of pack two, because you want to be able to keep up on card advantage. And I think kind of the average is like six learned spells and then like, you know, at least two creatures in the sideboard to get like two of the two of the mascots. And then hopefully you'll have like one environmental sciences and one of either the pump spell or the like kill spell and they draw a card. That's mm. that's been my feeling, at least. And that way, because that, you want to have some options, right? We finished this draft format. It's done now. <laughs> Figured it out. You want to have some options, period. Book closed. Congratulations. Mm-hmm. Congratulations, you have graduated. <laughs> <laughs> have you been able to get many uh, drafts in, Cam? I've just been playing Sealed a lot. I've been playing a lot of Sealed, too, to be honest. Cool. And my big lesson to take away from this is that don't cast Semester's End in your opponent's end step. You might feel like you're being very smart. Oh, no, because it's the beginning of the next end step, isn't it? It's the beginning of the next end, beginning of the next end step. Oh, no. That's one of those second main phase stops. Yeah, sure is. Or even worse, don't cast it in your own end step to give all your creatures pseudo vigilance. That doesn't work. So semester's end is, is it three and a white? Three and a white for an instant. It reads, exile any number of target creatures and or planeswalkers you control. At the beginning of the next, the beginning of the next end step, return each of them to the battlefield under its owner's control. Each of them enters the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on it if it's a creature and an additional loyalty counter on it if it's a planeswalker. See, all of the words on that are great. Mm -hmm. They're all, they're all useful words, except for the beginning of the next end step. (laughs) <laughs> so if you're like me and you like swing out and uh, your opponent's on the back foot and you cast this in your end step, it's a lot like wrathing your board uh, and then you get to die oh, because yeah. your entire team is like, cool, well, we're on break, finished our exams and we're all hammered. So <laughs> goodbye. Yeah, bye. <laughs> See ya. Yeah, it's like, you know, w- when you would finish exams at the end of semester and immediately got sick. Oh, yeah. Did anyone else have this experience? Like, it doesn't have to be exams at the end of semester. It could be like finishing a giant project. And it's like, oh, the stress came off and you relax just a little bit. And the door to your body goes just a little slumpy and all the viruses that we're trying to get in and three stooging their way in now can access you. Yeah, your body's like, okay, we don't have to maintain that level of productivity anymore. Let's die instead. (laughs) Yeah, you, you literally unclench your immune system. Yes, that's what it is. So that's what happened to me. And then I got to die next turn very quickly, which was merciful. I like James's suggestion of cast Semester's End during their end step and then untap and cast Wrath of God. Yeah, I mean, that would be awesome. That would have yeah. been real smart. I mean, maybe I could have bluffed that. Or is it is it Wrath or is it Day of Judgment? That's in It's the... Day of Judgment. Okay. There's a bunch of Wraths, though. There's the White Mastery also kills all their stuff for, for a lot of mana, but still. And then there's like a Black Green, just small creatures Wrath. There's a weird red Wrath that Kathleen played in a draft deck. It's like two red red, and then you exile a incendiary sorcery from your graveyard and then all all creatures get minus x minus x equal to its mana value right yeah. so yeah there's lots of wraths weirdly it doesn't feel like the wraths are like a really big part of this format like you know as usual they're rares but yeah i've been playing white decks a lot and like the white one it's just too fair to get a regular value out of the wrath you have to spend six mana and four of it has to be white so that's pretty tough to do even in a two-color deck and especially tough if you want to go like wrath new threat go that's now we're talking about like nine or ten mana yeah and the the masteries all the conditions are really fair you know like i think the black one's quite good where you get to spend two mana exile any creature and they draw a card that's like a pretty pretty clean trade like they sure they get another card but at least you killed their problem threat I think that's the best one. Like just from re- I've seen the other masteries come come by in draft and been like, eh, this is this is okay. But the black one's just four and a black instant speed exile something, which is all like that's just great already. And then you can potentially make it cheaper if you don't mind them drawing a card. Yeah. So the white one is like they get to put two of their creatures back into their hand. And then you have a Wrath of God otherwise, like four mana, destroy all creatures. But they get to pick two of their creatures and get them back in their hand. It's like, well, that doesn't really do what, what we want sweepers to do, right? Yeah. And then the green one is like four mana. Like it's like circuitous paths or explosive vegetation. Mm. But they get one of the lands. 
Right. Yeah. Or you can spend six mana. Oh, right. That one is really weirdly yeah. worded. Yeah. It's like you go get three lands, but one of them goes to your opponent. So you've ramped one more than your opponent for four mana. Right. I had to read this several times. So Verdant Mastery, five and a green. You may pay three and a green rather than pay this spell's mana cost. Search your library for up to four basic land cards and reveal them. Put one of them onto the battlefield tapped under an opponent's control if the three and a green cost was paid. Put two of them onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into your hand, then shuffle. <laughs> so for six mana, you get four cards. You put two of them into play tapped and two of them into your hand. Or for four mana, you go looking for four cards. You still put two of them into play tapped. Your opponent also gets one of them tapped, and you put the, the other one in your hand. Okay, I forgot about the other one that goes to your hand, so I guess that's a little better, but it still seems pretty sketchy. It's so weird. Like, like let's pay four mana, let's like use our turn to ramp, but we're also going to ramp our opponent. And then the blue one... I've considered putting in deck. Like I play blue a lot. Like I'm I'm usually on either Quandrix or Silver Quill. So, but I play Quandrix a lot in draft. And this blue one's like for three mana, you can draw three cards, but then your opponent gets two treasures and descry two. So yeah, you're up on cards, but they might like slam something huge you can't deal with down immediately after that. Or you can pay three and X and draw that many cards. Yeah, I had an opponent play this against me and I was like, wait, what? I get like, not like in a way that I thought that they messed up or something. I was surprised how much value I got. I was like, oh, I get to scry. Cool. All right. Where these treasure tokens come from? Wait, I get the treasure token? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this has to be commander shenanigans, right? Oh, like probably tricking people. Yeah. Like it goes straight into the, the goat commander, Zedru or whatever. Look, have some permanents that I own. <laughs> or no, that's mm. not how token creation works anymore. All right. Maybe just being friends. You're thinking like politics. Yeah, probably. There's right. some shenanigans here. This feels like shenanigans. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe these cards are better in Commander. Most things are. If it was bad and limited, it's probably sweet in Commander. A little, <laughs> little new set rule of thumb. I forget what the red one does. I think it's kind of unplayable and sealed, maybe. The red one is Fervent Mastery, and it's three red red, but you can pay two red red. If you pay the two red red, an opponent draws any number of cards, sorry, an opponent discards any number of cards, then draws that many cards. So they can just rummage as much as they want. And then whether or not that happens, you search your library for three cards, put them into your hand, shuffle, then discard three cards at random. So it's a triple gamble. Right. Yeah. Triple gamble, whether you let your opponent rummage or not. Seems bad. Yeah, it doesn't seem great. I'm not sure sure which limited deck in this format wants to spend four or five mana on triple gamble this is a very minor thing but all the masteries also have an extended art version and i'm just looking at them on scryfall and noting that unlike some previous extended arts i don't know when this happened most recently but rather than blowing up the art like increasing the size and losing a little bit at the top and bottom they are actually like more art. Like the version in a normal card frame has its edges slightly cropped in. So they're exactly the same size and scale on the card. It's just they have more art on the left and right hand side. So it looks a lot better. Mm, cool. Yeah. Yeah, that seems like a quality of life improvement. Mm -hmm. Speaking of which, the foils that I opened in those set boosters are still flat. That's great. Good to hear. Good Happy to hear. hear that. Hopefully yeah. they can just stick with this process. And I, I will say, not the collector boosters. Oh, yikes. Okay. Yeah. Mm, I the, should check on my collector booster foils. Yeah, all the pack foils out of the collector boosters that we opened at the PPR, definitely curling. The foils in the commander product definitely curled. But everything I opened in my draft boosters in the pre-release kit and the set boosters because kathleen and i opened a whole box of set boosters those foils are still flat so getting there all right quick recap before we talk about other products how are you feeling about the limited environment so far you two have mostly been playing sealed mostly but i have done a couple drafts i think it's sweet it feels interactive it's fast lots of decision points i haven't been blown out so grotesquely by a mystical archive card that it has made me mad <laughs> i have been blown out by mystical archive cards but it's generally a golf clap moment it's like well fair play to you <laughs> yeah yeah exactly and i've enjoyed the moments where i've been able to do stuff like that tendrils or the, the grape shot moment we talked about right like i don't know the mystical archive cards add a i think they add a little fun bit of spice 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just put a little English into your games, you know? Mm -hmm. I think it's probably going to add a lot of replay value to the set. And I don't know if it's like maybe it'll lose the luster or something if they start doing it for every set but it does kind of feel like i don't know draft is more f- like I've, I've been mostly playing draft but draft is a bit more fun if you're like okay 14 cards of this set and then one card from the cube like yeah. in every pack right so you're like well like it might not always matter but sometimes you're like whoa <laughs> there's a lightning bolt in my pack <laughs> didn't think i was gonna get to do that today i i have a couple times opened or been past mind's desire and been like ah I, I don't I don't think I can do this one. I don't think we can make mind desire work. At least I can't. I mean, mind desire is pretty strong. Like, I mean, it, you know, if you can just get it to do two copies, it's two free spells. I mean, it doesn't let you put extra lands into play, but yeah. But that's the thing is that you need because it is six mana is yeah. the problem. So you need to cast something else and then the mind's desire. So you need to have you know probably at least eight mana and then a two mana spell. And it's just sort of like ah, uh... it is just a random card too. So like you could hit a combat trick and like well this isn't really what I wanted to do this. Yeah, time warp I've done. Time warp was yeah. stupid. Time warp's pretty good. I got, I had a sealed pool of time warp too. Yeah, I had my opponent in one game. He had. They had Demonic Tutor and they played at both games, but also in the first game, I can't remember what all the cards were. It might have been like Revitalize or Shock or Lightning Bolt, but definitely their first three plays of the game, like by the time I have like two creatures on the board, all they've done is cast Mystical Archive Sorceries. <laughs> and it was just like, wow, your deck is way cooler than mine. <laughs> way to go. Attack you for six with Quandrix Plague Mage. Man, Quandrix Plague Mage is so good. Yeah, no, I love that card. Yeah. It's really good. So I've been drafting more, I was saying, and I I find the lesson learn a situation and the mystical archives too, but having to figure out when to pick the lessons and when to pick the learn cards and how to prioritize everything and trying to like make sure that you're you've got enough of the right lessons in your sideboard adds an extra layer of complexity to the draft that I personally enjoy. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I've been having a lot of fun with it. And I'm impressed because I also really like to call time draft. So way to go, Watsy. Yeah. Good good work, R and D. Two mm-hmm. great limited formats in a row. James isn't quite as bullish on the mystical archive cards but even though he's here with us running the card reader he's decided not to talk so we don't get to hear from him (laughs) and now everyone knows that it was his choice (laughs) i don't know maybe his mic's messed up too lrr secrets every podcast stream or video you've seen has james hovering above a microphone yeah every single one every one he could speak whenever he wants to he just chooses not to it's knowing when to use that power is we used to call him the production manager, but after now, we're going to call him the shadowy overlord. Admirable restraint. Hey, if you did like the Mystical Archive cards and you wanted to get your hands on yet even more of them, that is just some of the new secret layers. They announced a whole bunch of new secret layers for Dr. Lair's Secretorium Super Drop. I don't know exactly why it's styled in this way, but there's there's a bunch of different individual secret layers and then a bunch of bundles as well. I guess let's talk about them. So there's the showcase, Strixhaven, which comes in regular or foil and it is yet further cards with the mystical archive frame and art treatment and in particular they are all is dust fire covenant fractured identity fracturing gust drown in the lock and artifact mutation can i just say this fire covenant art is off the chain it's very good it's just unstoppable this card from Ice Age, I know, saw a little play in Highlander circa 2012, 2013. Yeah, I remember Fire Covenant. Yeah, as a way of doming out Boros Reckoner <laughs> and closing out games in Mardu. It's also just like decent, even if you don't have the combo win with it, because you can pay life to three for one of them. Mm-hmm. I think we used it in a Friday Nights episode, the one where Prof is doing a trivia game, because the original art for Fire Covenant is just like a dragon but not doing anything it's just the the face of a dragon and it's like oh what dragon is that oh no that's an instant okay yeah it it looks a little grumpy yeah right like it's just like oh, fine i'll kill them hungover dragon mm-hmm. so those look sweet and again you can get that in foil or non-foil there's a series of five different secret layers. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say the prices. Those are $30 US or $40 US for foil. And I mean, I'm betting that whatever foil system they're using for secret layer is still going to be, because these are print on demand, right? It's still going to be maybe not amazing. So I don't know. I can't really bring myself to buy a foil secret layer at the moment. We'll have to see if maybe that improves. They've got five that are $30 each for three cards. And they're shock lands. So they're called the culture shock 
sets, and they are Bant, Esper, Grixis, Jund, and Naya. And so the Bant one is Breeding Pool, Hallowed Fountain, and Temple Garden. The Esper one is Godless Shrine, Hallowed Fountain, and Watery Grave. The Grixis one is Blood Crypt, Steam Vents, Watery Grave. Jund is Blood Crypt, Overgrown Tomb, Stomping Ground, and the Naya is Sacred Foundry, Stomping Ground, Temple Garden. So obviously there, you heard some repeats in there because that's how colors work. But yeah, so there's those. Or you can get all of them together in a bundle for $120. So that's a... It, it's it's basically buy, f- buy four, get a fifth free is essentially how that sort of pricing works out. How does that stack up to what the Shocklands are going for these days, Nelson? Okay, so... Right away, I don't know, but it seems fine. Like the price of Shocklands has obviously wobbled all over the place. But, you know, in my tenure at Yellow Jacket, selling a Shockland for $10 is usually pretty good and like something that people are going for. I will quickly price check Sacred Foundry as usually a marker of like a cheaper one. Okay. Sacred Foundry currently $15 on, hmm. you know, MTG price or whatever T- TCG player, I think. Yeah. So like getting one of each shock and then like an extra one of each of the allied ones it's not bad it's not bad temple garden also above ten dollars so this is a decent price like these this is just a good deal on shock lands also the seb mckinnon blood crypt yeah very good i know i i realize he tweeted earlier today on friday i want to say that it was older art that he had lying around but you know it looks pretty cool i mean that that that's a blood crypt that's it looks like markov manor it is yeah, i was just gonna manor. say it looks it appears to be a blood crypt from Innistrad. yeah cool yeah. yeah i bet these all look really cool i'm i'm just seeing these for the first time now i hadn't even heard about either the lands or the new missile archives i've only seen the the next two that we're going to talk about after this mm-hmm. but yeah this looks like a perfectly fine deal on shocklands i'm gonna talk about this one first so there's a bundle called our show is on friday can you make it <laughs> and this is another set of five cards for 30 bucks in the realm of those sort of band posters mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and these are all it says here some cool hand-drawn cards by ian jepson sam mckenzie jermaine rogers jeff soto and alexis zirit and i was very excited actually to see the jeff soto one there because you may have noticed in the back of some of our videos i don't know but we have an, an enormous jeff soto print in our house he does very cool stuff cam it's the one with like the weird like mech i guess oh oh yeah 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 Yeah. the weird like soft cartoon mecha thing yeah yeah no and i i mean i really like these these are like psychedelic 70s band posters yeah right they're they're fun my only like complaint about them is that i didn't appreciate how much work has clearly goes into the art direction in making sure that the prominent colors in a piece of artwork reflect that that card's color identity Mm. or the border at least reinforces the color identity because nature's lore looks like a blue spell wrath of god here looks like a red spell right nobody's going to mistake the like if you say like i cast gamble they're not going to be like oh okay that's black mana but here you know it it looks like a black spell yeah so is that a sticking point for you like you don't like them for that reason uh i don't know that i don't don't like them it's just something that i i noticed i guess i don't know i don't know i would need to see them in person i think yeah i had a conversation with another judge and it's like one of the things about these cards, and it's, it's no different than the metal band poster ones, is that, okay, if, if we're going to, pr- if they're going to print these cards, they probably need, and they're going to be tournament legal, obviously, like, we probably need to reassess the policy, like the general policy on art alters at tournaments, because you can't say that like any of these cards look like a recognizable magic card. And that used to be like one of the things it's like, okay, don't cover the border, don't cover the name, you know, don't put art on top of the art of the card that makes it look like a completely different thing. Like you can change it and you can like full bleed it out or whatever. And that's okay. As long as the border on the side isn't also painted. So you can't see it from the side. Don't make it too thick. You know, there's all these restrictions we put on art alters. If you're going to play a card in a tournament and like, you know, everything out of this secret layer just looks like a card from another game. Right. And none of them look at all like the regular versions of any of the other printings of these cards. They're all cool. I like all of these pieces of artwork. It's just, I I would not have identified these as magic cards. Mm. Yeah, I'm super hyped for this one. I really, really like it. Like, you know how the idea of Secret Lair is, okay, it's not for everybody, but for some people, like, this is going to be their favorite thing, right? They'll love the Seb McKinnon package, or they're going to love the, like, kittens or the funny goblins with, like, the weird cartoony art, right? Like, this one, the psychedelic poster cards, I am 
definitely buying this secret layer. Yeah, like the preordain with the Jack Kirby oh, like God. dots in the background is so cool. Thank you, Alexis Zirit. I should say, because I don't know if we've done a full rundown, but the cards are Decree of Pain, Gamble, Nature's Lore, Preordain, and Wrath of God. And yeah, they look really cool. I'm especially stoked that there's like at least a couple solid Highlander playables. Actually, like four out of five of these cards get played in Canadian Highlander. And the fifth one, yeah, I didn't used to play it in Commander, but I guess I will now. Hmm. Which one's that? Decree of Pain. I oh, mean, yeah. maybe there might be a Canadian Highlander deck that wants Decree of Pain. If you're like, maybe like the, the post Amonkhet cycling deck. I know Jerry was trying to make that work for a little while. Like there's that cool six mana enchantment that cares about cycling. You can kind of go crazy with. The other one, <laughs> the other secret lair that they have right now is, I mean, it's basically a, it's a crap post in that like literally <laughs> someone made this a while ago on the magic subreddit as a joke. And now They've done it for real. These are in the same vein as full art lands. These are full text lands. Um, they really did it. The lands of magic are known for their beautiful sweeping landscapes and awe-inspiring exotic locales. Fie on that we say. Fie. Too long has gorgeous art gotten in the way of the most exciting part of the game. An extremely detailed rule system dictating exactly how to play it. Featuring art by absolutely nobody, the full text lands are a deep dive into the inner machinery of basic lands. Let's go with our old friend Island. So it's Island, basic Island, and there's no art, and the entire card is a rules box that says, this card's name is Island. Basic is its super type, and land is its card type, and island is its subtype. A deck may contain any number of basic land cards with the same name. You may play this card during a main phase of your turn while the stack is empty and if you have priority. You may not play this card if it is not your turn or if you do not have any land plays remaining. While on the battlefield, this card is a basic island permanent. Because it has the subtype island, this permanent has the intrinsic mana ability, tap, add blue. This ability can be activated anytime you have the priority or are prompted to pay mana, but only while island is on the battlefield. To activate it, pay its cost, tap. The tap symbol denotes tapping a permanent by rotating it 90 degrees. It is then tapped and cannot be tapped again until it is untapped. Once the cost is paid, you add one blue mana, denoted by the blue mana symbol, which may then be spent immediately or left unspent for later use. As each phase or step of the turn ends, you lose any remaining unspent mana. Hilarious. I saw, <laughs> I, liked a, I liked a tweet a lot that was, oh, it says turn 90 degrees, so are these not legal on Arena? <laughs> That's a really good point. A surge also isn't allowed to play them. Sorry, yeah, surge. surge. Surge can't play these. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. He probably doesn't want to. So like this, I think this is very funny. It's very, very stupid, but very funny. And I mean, some folks are annoyed that even though they didn't have to commission art for these, it's still 30 bucks for all five. I, I think that's reasonable to, to be, to be annoyed about that. But also it's like, don't, don't, don't buy them. Like... <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. This is the fact that all these things are print on demand means that once he can do this and be like, look, I don't know. We thought it'd be funny. Do, do you, do you, do you want it? If you want it, then it's, we're going to charge you the, you know, the normal amount. And if you don't want it at that price, then okay. <laughs> they do give you the buy eight, get two free option. So it's a little cheaper than 30 bucks for five. If you, if you really want these, if you're that person who's decided that their cube and their commander decks and their draft sets all need to be full text lands. These are so, so unattractive. Yeah. I find them preposterously ugly. Yes. <laughs> yeah. The it's 30 bucks for one of each or 40 bucks for one of each in foil. And I cannot imagine that. Or yeah, you can buy the voracious reader bundle for $240, which is 10 copies of each uh-huh and i don't know i want to find someone who's bought that and just check that they're okay but <laughs> like i don't know i think it's great and hilarious that these exist and i definitely don't want them what would that person say to you like and that person's probably listening you know we've got a fair number of listeners and like this product is going to probably sell like some people are going to buy these voracious reader bundles and like you know, I still respect you if you buy this voracious reader bundle, but I think you and I both know that you're not okay, right? Like if you want, <laughs> like, like there's, like you've decided that, that this is this is the violence that you're choosing is just to like outfit <laughs> your magic collection with no art on your basics. Yeah, like I mean, I used to dread seeing the turn one library of Alexandria, but if my opponent flops one of these turn one, I know something horrible is going to happen to me over the next ten minutes. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> 50 minutes probably god it's gonna be 90 <laughs> oh no <laughs>
Yeah, if you're in a command, if someone goes full text island tap soul ring, oh, you just pick up your cards and leave. Right? <laughs> 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 sorry stream's over sorry <laughs> james we can't play with this guest after all <laughs> uh, oh i kind of want them for my like limited draft kit right <laughs> like, oh cam's just come full circle i th- thought this was a voracious reader safe space <laughs> or the opposite of that i mean yeah please like these away. are a statement of intent yeah that's fair <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm put in the mind of that meme of the the bearded cartoon that agrees with people right that it's just like wow you bought the voracious reader bundle there's something deeply wrong with you and their response is just yes mm, mm-hmm. yeah i'm surprised no one was tweeting about this these shock lands though yeah i mean they're they're nice art and a decent deal yeah the main event bundle which is everything well Yes, it's one of each of the things, which is to say one of each of the Shockland bundles, so all five of those, but only one copy of each, one copy of the full text lands, one copy of the full text lands and foil, one copy of the posters, one copy of the Strixhaven Showcase, and one copy of the Strixhaven Showcase in foil. And it also comes with an arena sleeve of, oh, a Fire Covenant. Dang, that looks oh, rad. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Okay, each- wait, hold on. You don't get that arena sleeve any other way, too. I was I was clicking around trying to find it. Do I get a voracious reader code for arena? No, I don't think any of the other ones come no. with codes. <laughs> Dang it. I, I remember when these codes, these like arena redemptions first came out on the first round of Secret Layers. I was like, oh, okay, that's cute that they're adding that. And then like two years later, I'm like, I live for these sleeves. I really, <laughs> li- really <laughs> like them a lot. And I'm glad I have them. And I want more cool sleeves through Secret Layers. So I, it actually makes me consider buying this main event bundle, even though I only really want the one thing. So that that one is $260. If, if you added up the other prices, it would add up to 320 so it's you know ostensibly a big savings i mean that's how it's designed obviously (laughs) but these are available in a little over two days how long are they going to be up for it's not like a single day right oftentimes these super drops they give you a week but i can't find anywhere here on the page where it tells you when it's going to end it says it releases in august right that's when they'll start shipping them out if you live in canada it's going to take an extra two months or whatever yeah so I have no idea. Probably in two days you can find out how long they're going to be up for. Yeah. It's, those lands are so silly. Yeah. Speaking of silly things, if you like to call your magic cards silly names or write little <laughs> short silly stories about them or sing songs, it turns out a lot of our nicknames have just been us singing entire verses of songs. Head on over to lrr.cc slash nicknames thank you lrr.cc slash nicknames and help us out by voting for and inputting your favorite nicknames for Strixhaven cards because our nickname episode is coming up soon is it next week or the week after yeah sometime in the next several episodes yeah but the website should be live now yes yeah and also live is the website for card kingdom who sponsor oh, this show butter cartoon.com slash LRR. Please go check them out. And also our Patreon at patreon.com slash loading ready run. That's going to do it for Tap Tap Concede this week. I have been Graham. That has been Cameron. Uh? That has been Nelson. Oh, James was here running the card reader. Jordan edits these. Heather gets them online. Thank you all so much for listening. That's going to do it. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.